Hi, Rich Pisano here from Digitally Feelers. And about a year ago, I did a tutorial on how to create a jigsaw puzzle. It was a little bit complicated, and it's a year later, and I learned so much more since then. And I could show you how to quickly now create a jigsaw puzzle. Plus, if you stay till the end of the video, I'll tell you how to get this asset panel, which I created. It's free, and it'll allow you to create a jigsaw puzzle in no time. So let's get started. Now this is showing very few pieces, but you can make it as many pieces as you want. And I'll also show you how to do that very quickly. So I'm going to delete this right now. I pulled this photo from Unsplash, and I'll just put this uh, name link below in the description. And you can use any photo you like. It doesn't really matter what the photo is. And I'm going to hide this for now. And I'm going to show you that here is my asset panel. And I am going to show you different things. For example, if you, you have a puzzle, you can just pull that out. And it's a clean puzzle, puzzle pieces. I'm going to delete it. You can also do a 3D one like this. And when you put it in front of the picture, for example, you could just move this one right in front of it. That's how fast and easy it is. Uh, just remember though, but the, the ones that are 3D, your processor has to be pretty quick. And I'll tell you why that happens later on also. So I'm also going to delete that. I'd like you to first learn how I created these puzzle pieces. And that's why I have these other things in the assets, which you'll get for free. And I'm going to show you that I am going to pull these out. And by the way, if you don't see an asset panel, you just go to view, studio, and assets. And then you can move this all around, or you can just push it right to the side like that. So I'm going to show you that all you need to create to do any jigsaw puzzle, if you're doing it from scratch, are these five pieces. And if you think you need more than those five pieces, I also did a color code one just like this. If you look at the green, the green is the same green for every corner. I just flipped them. And all the sides, the flat sides, you only need the orange one and the fuchsia one. And it's always all the sides. It doesn't matter the inside sides here. And anything in the center, all you would need are these two, this one and this one, and you just move them around. So I just gave you an example of that in case you want to understand how you work this. I'm just going to get right to the fun stuff and show you how I created these five pieces. And this is how I did it. All you need is a square and four circles. And I'll leave that on the side and show you how I do it. So I'm going to go to my shape tool and get in the rectangle tool and I'm going to hold shift and make a square. I don't really need my uh, style to be that thick and it could be any color. It doesn't matter what color it is. So that looks pretty good. Now if you have snapping turned on and you can move to the center of the page like that, it helps because you see the cross in the middle right there. That's, it helps you with this dot and this dot. It's going right in the center. So the next thing you do is you go to the shape tool and do an ellipse and you hold shift. And let's say that one. And because you have that snapping turned on and it's in the center, you want it to snap to the center dots right up and down, up and down to the red. That's the center of the page. And then the dots right here in the center. So now I'm going to take that one and I'm going to duplicate it. So control command J and I'm moving that one here. I want the dot on the side of the square and I want this to be in the center. So I can also, once again, I can duplicate that. So control command J, and move that. And now we want to see the green line right here. I want to do that to the center. And then I'm going to, at this time I'll do copy and paste in case you don't want to do control or command J. So it's control or command copy, that's C. And then control or command V is paste. And then I'll move this and you see how it's following the line. And there you go. So that is your main thing. So I'm going to delete that right now because I'll use this one, which I originally did. And keep one on the side. And I grouped it, by the way, right here. So keep one on the side and then duplicate it. So control command J. Let's create this piece up here on top. You need to use geometry. Whenever you subtract, the thing that gets subtracted from must be on the bottom. So you want 
since you want the rectangle to have this groove here, it must be on the bottom. And it's easier to do it another way. I have this group because it's my original. So if you ungroup it, let me do right click and say ungroup, then they're no longer grouped. I can just go like this. And as long as I don't fully select those right and left ones, I've just selected these three. And I all I have to do is go layer, geometry, subtract. And you see that I have subtracted the top and the bottom, just like this. And now, adding doesn't matter what order they're in, so I'll select them all and do Layer, Geometry, and Add. And now you have this piece up here. So that's how you create that one. I'm going to show you how to do the corners and the flat side. So I'll delete this. I'll take this one again, duplicate it with the Control or Command J. I'll ungroup that duplicate. And now, to get a corner, for example, or just a one side, all you have to do is delete. So I'll just do this corner. I'm deleting that one, deleting that one, selecting this, not the one on the right, not the circle on the right, because I want to cut it. So I go Layer, Geometry, Subtract, and then select them both and do Layer, Geometry, Add. So you get the idea. Same here. On this one, I just took away the top, add, uh, subtracted the bottom, and then added these two. So I'm not going to go into that. If you want to see that other puzzle tutorial, you could watch it, but you won't even need to because if you download my assets, uh, you just pull them out. So that's all you, you have them there. So we're ready now. So I am going to bring this back. I'm going to keep a duplicate because I don't want to of this photo because I always like to keep an extra one. If you don't have a really fast processor, my suggestion is to pull this one out. And you just pull these out like that. Like that. And I just happen to make this one the same size. I'm going to hide this one second. Once all your pieces are together, you can always squeeze them. It doesn't have to be perfect square in there. You can make them any kind, but as long as everything is together before you do that. So I'm going to pull that back. I'll put this back up. And this is a little off, uh, so I will just snap them into place because I have snapping turned on. And that's how easy it is to do that one. Um, I'll show you how to pull them out later too, but I want to do the 3D one. The 3D one was a little bit more difficult for me. I had some struggles. I pulled this one out here. Try and get in place, and you see how much slower it's moving? And I'll tell you why it's moving that slow. I tried to do on the whole group an emboss like like this, and it did not work because it only embossed the group as a whole, and it only gave me a square emboss. So what I found out I had to do, and if you can tell me a better way, I'd love you to just contact me uh, in the comments below. What I had to do is actually, let me show you what it really looks like, the piece right down on the bottom here is what we're doing. I had to give it a color because without the color, the emboss wasn't working. I gave it, when it was clear, it wasn't working at all. So I had to give it a color and then go to bevel emboss and I gave it an inner emboss and then I had to turn the fill opacity down to zero. And that is why the computer moves slower because it has to remember every one of these has a fill opacity of zero. If you ever want to make a bigger puzzle with more pieces. I could show you that right now. And then I'll show you how to split these up. So if I want this, let's say I just ungroup this right now. Uh, ungroup. Say you pulled in a photo and it was a different size. Say it was like that, much bigger or something, or longer like that, or like that. And you want to, you want the puzzle to have more pieces. You only need to select this top row like that and slide it up to wherever you need it to be. Move this bottom row. I'm going to do that again. I'm just going to make a selection. And since they're ungrouped on the, over here, it's easy to make that selection. And I'm going to drag these down. OK, and now you have to make sure that you drag at least two rows down. I'm going to go way down here just for now. And so now let's take this row, the both of these, and bring them back up to meet this one. In this snapping, if you open the snapping up and you say, Snap to uh, shape key point. I'm sorry, snap to object geometry. It's a better snap. Not 100% sure if I imagine it, but it kind of snaps better than when it wasn't selected. 
and I only use that on geometry. So what I did now is when I move that up, now I'm going to select them again, and I'm going to duplicate them. So or I can hold Option and drag them, and with my Shift key, I'm just going that way. So now I just added two more rows, and then if I grab the bottom ones again and move them up. So you can see how you can add. So let me come out a little bit and let me do a cropping thing and add to this page so we can see what we're doing. So you can decide, for example, this isn't the right. You have to first pick your picture, of course, and decide whether you want to add more on the right or the left. But just I'm just trying to show you that if this photo was a little bit bigger when you pulled it in or it was a long photo, you can snap that into place like that. So it's not the same proportion, but I'm just showing you if you pulled a different kind of photo in. So now you have more pieces, and you can put as many pieces as you want. And then here was a little uh, trick here too. Say you wanted to make like the puzzle is unfinished, and let's say we pull out uh, this corner piece, like you haven't done that corner. Find out which corner it is, and that looks like it's the first, no, it's not even the first piece. And mark it somehow, it doesn't matter what you want to call it, um, just pull pulled. I'm going to put pulled because I'm going to pull that piece out. All right. And then I'm going to hold uh, command and click on the icon and I'm selecting that shape and then go down to your photo. Now this photo must be rasterized. If, you, if it's not, you right click and you say rasterize. And if it's rasterized, now you can take that photo and do control or command J and that piece is right above it. And then we can control or command D to deselect. So here's the piece right down here. Now remember the one we just called pulled? Let's take that now and slide that all the way down. And I'm going to move that one right in front of this one. And I'm going to group them. So control command G and it's grouped. So now I can pull that piece out. Oh, I did make one mistake. And so let me control click that again. Yeah, I should have done uh, control command X to cut and then paste. So if I do X and now you won't see it underneath. So now if I put this back on, I can grab that and move that piece wherever I want. I can make like it's not done. I'm just finishing up. I'm just about to put that piece in. So really, it's very quick, a lot quicker than the first tutorial I did. It was a little bit confusing, but there were some great, great people who commented and gave me links, and they showed me all their work that they did with the first puzzle, and, and that was a lot of work. This one, anyone can do. It's so simple how you can do this puzzle. Um, so let me show you now about the assets. I left a link on the bottom of the description to my assets. It's 100% free. I don't like to charge anybody anything. Uh, I just do this because I just enjoy teaching. And what you do is you download that. And I'm going to click this one. I had two here because I was practicing. And I'm going to hold that. And I'm going to say delete. So yours will not have anything. Yours might just say assets. You might have other things from other people. But assets are here. And remember, to get that, you go view, studio, assets. So open up your assets. And leave that out here. Download the folder. I have mine in my download folder. So then when you have assets showing up here, you go here and you say import assets. And I have gone mine in my download folder. And I clicked on it. And I say open. And there it is. And from now on, when you open up your assets, you'll see a digitally fearless puzzle pieces. And you can get other people's. Like you can go back to assets and somebody else's, but then you do the drop down to digitally fillers and there's the puzzle pieces. So I hope you liked this tutorial. And if you did, please click like and subscribe. Also, please send me some photos if you've worked on any of these puzzles. Uh, you can just put it in the comments. I would love to see them because some people are so creative. I do these very quickly just to show you how to do them, but you should spend much more time. But now you don't need to spend that much time. You just drag it out onto any photo and you can work away from there, okay? So take care and have a great day. Bye.